Welcome to this Easy 11 Plus short lesson on currency, that is money, and currency conversions. Please subscribe to my channel and please check out the links in the video description, including to some free resources with full solutions. Let's get started. This worksheet is, of course, as always, linked in the video description where you can print it off for your own use. Let's have a look at this question. In England, the money we use is pounds. In Europe, the money they use is euros, of course and we read that 100 pounds is worth the same as 120 euros. Of course, in real life, this changes constantly. There are various different ways of doing this, but in essence, this is a ratios question. So the easiest way to handle it is to set up a nice, simple table. Those are my symbols for pounds and euros. Now we've done what you should always do at the start of a maths problem that might be confusing. We've just written down what we know, which is that 100 pounds gives 120 euros. But we want to know how many euros are equivalent to 500 pounds. What have we done to get from 100 pounds to 500 pounds? Don't say that we've added 400. Instead, we've multiplied the amount by five. Therefore, to get the equivalent amount in euros, we also need to multiply it by 5. So the answer is 600 euros. You don't have to set your working out this way. You could also do it like this. You could say that 500 pounds is 5 lots of 100 pounds, which is equivalent to 5 lots of 120 euros which gives us 600 euros. Let's take the same starting approach for this one and set up a table. And once again, we know that 100 pounds is equivalent to 120 euros. It may not be entirely obvious how to get from 120 euros to 300 euros, so let's start by simplifying this a bit. If 100 pounds give 120 euros, then it makes sense that 50 pounds give 60 euros and you can get from 60 to 300 by multiplying because 6 times 5 is 30 so 60 times 5 is 300. And so we need to do the same with the number of pounds. And it's as simple as that. 300 euros is equivalent to 250 pounds. You could take various other approaches to simplifying. You could go right down to 5 to 6 and then say how many times does 6 multiply to get to 300, you'll get to the same answer in the end, however you approach it. It might be worth mentioning that you can also do this directly in one step using the same table approach. It would work like this. We need to know what we've multiplied 120 by to get 300. And you can do that by writing it as a fraction with 300 on the top and simplifying it. So that tells us that you get from 120 to 300 if you multiply by 5 over 2. And 5 over 2 is otherwise known as... So 5 over 2 times 100 is 2.5 times 100, which is 250. Either method works fine. We're given some information here about money in the ancient wizarding world of haberdashers, otherwise known as Britain before decimalization. And so in this world, one pound contains 20 shillings and one shilling contains 12 pence. And it might be worth saying that the symbol for shilling is, unsurprisingly, S, and the symbol for pence is D. And these come from Latin for solidus and denarius. We then learn about the prices of large and small margarine beers. Sounds disgusting. And we need to find out the difference in price. And the answer box makes clear that we need a price in shillings and pence. There's no space here for pounds. So it makes sense to convert the price of a large beer, which is given in pounds and shillings and pence, just into shillings and pence. One pound is 20 shillings. So taken together, this is 20 four shillings and nine pence. We just need to subtract. So 24 shillings minus 14 shillings gives us, of course, 10 shillings and nine pence minus 
5 pence gives us 4 pence. So we're left with 10 shillings and 4 pence. There are 12 pence in a shilling and 4 is not greater than 12, so we don't need to do any carrying between those columns. Now we need to add up the cost of one large and two small beers. So let's write it out nice and clearly. A large beer is one pound, four shillings and nine pence, while a small beer is 14 shillings and five pence. Of course, we've got two small beers here. And adding it up, we have 19 pence, 32 shillings and a pound if we move backwards. But be careful, this is not our final answer. We're told in the initial question that there were 12 pence in a shilling. So just as you wouldn't talk about two pounds, 120 pence, you talk about three pounds, 20, here to talk about 32 shillings and 19 pence just doesn't make any sense. Instead, we've got 12 pence and another seven pence. And those 12 pence are another shilling. So we've got one pound, 33 shillings and seven pence. But hang on a sec, because we know that there are 20 shillings in a pound. So 33 shillings is more than a pound. In fact, we have two pounds, 13 shillings, if we take away those 20 shillings that we've written as another pound, and again, seven pence. As you can see, if you work carefully stepwise and pay attention to the information given in the question, this isn't so difficult. I hope that was useful. I'm going to publish another video very soon with a rather harder currency question, but in the meantime, I hope that gets you off to a good start. The methods are nice and simple once you get used to them. Please subscribe to my channel. Please check out the links in the video description, including the free resources, and please be back next Tuesday evening at six o'clock for my next Easy 11 Plus live lesson. Bye-bye.